In recent weeks, while Pentakill has dominated the meta, Riven has flown largely uncontested. If you'd like to play a consistent, strong carry, then this is the comp for you. Let's break it down. To start the game, you need to get 8-bit online ASAP. This means playing with Corky and Garen or an 8-bit headliner as fast as you can. You want to pair Garen and Corky with any Sentinel or Big Shots. You want to go heavy frontline if possible, as my favorite combo is playing with Lilia, Kaisa, and Evelyn to get you KDA. The KDA health and damage gained is great. You can also play around KDA headliner early as long as you have Garen and Corky in for 2 8-bit. If you find Kaisa early enough, you can have her hold the damage items. But if you place them on Corky, remember to hold an extra copy on bench to move the items later. As for bruiser items, you can have Evelyn hold them until you find Riven. As you move into the mid game, you want to drop the KDA units and transition to Riven carry. At level 7, your board should look something like this. You want to slow roll for Riven and Yone 3 star, as well as Echo and Garen being possible options. Once you're close to Riven 3, all in roll down to 0 and try to hit. You always want to play for 6 8 bit if you can with an early emblem or spatula. But if you know you won't get to 6, then drop Corky for another synergy like rapid fire or crowd dive. If you absolutely high roll, there is a pentakill variant where you can swap Yone and Echo for Viego and Mordekaiser. However, with recent buffs to pentakill units, those combos are contested. If you have trouble finding kill, just swap in any edgelord. Caitlyn might take a little while to find on level 7, but you should be able to find at least one while rolling for Riven. This board caps out with Riven 3, Yone 3, so if you have the items to support them both, it's better to go for 3 stars. But if you can only get Riven 3, that's okay, because Kane, Lucian, and Caitlyn are all solid backup carries, so scout to make sure nobody is contesting you with Yone, then decide if you want to push levels or keep rolling after Riven. Once you've hit your 3 stars, it's time to add legendaries into the board. Lucian for Rapid Fire, Kiana for True Damage and Crowd Diver, and lastly Kane are the units you want most. And if you make it all the way to level 10, you can throw in a Jazz unit to splash in more damage and health from all the traits you have. Make sure to tailor your board to fit in more traits depending on your headliner. Sona, Jin, Ezreal, and Blitzcrank are all solid options that you can take in. If you've made it this far, then items, augments, and positioning will determine who takes first. So let's break that down. For damage items, Riven needs QSS and a healing item as mandatory, followed by a damage item if possible. Titan's Resolve is her best damage item, but if you can't build it, Giant Slayer does really well too. For Yone, he needs a healing item with Titan's Resolve and any third damage item. Quicksilver Slash works fine on him, but he doesn't need it since he gets a ton more sustain from his ability. Lastly, if Caitlyn is your backup carry, you can give her any power items and she'll do fine. Infinity Edge, Giant Slayer, Deathblade, all do well on her. Now for tank items, this comp focuses on multiple carries, so you don't want to build them if possible, but if you need to, then Dragon's Claw or Bramble are solid options. Redemption is great for team healing as well. Any extra items in this comp should be focused on utility. Sunfire or Morello are great for anti-heal. Redemption provides extra sustain, and even Shroud is great to shred armor to help kill frontline. Now let's talk about augments. Gargantuan Resolve is one of the best augments for this comp. It's best taken on 3-2 or 4-2, as this gives you a free item and it scales even higher than usual, with both of your carries being able to use it. Silver Veil is a best in slot option, allowing you to skip QSS and give a second damage item to Rivet. Indomitable Will is a weaker version of Silver Veil, but it's still a great take as it lets you skip over taking QSS for another item. Harm Assist is especially broken on Yone. This provides great sustain and turns his overheal into damage. Remember Your Roots is excellent as long as you have a Riven headliner since she'll provide the boost to both Edgelords and 8-bits. Gifts from the Fallen is a best in slot take here because most rounds end with Yone or Riven going 1v9, so they'll get excellent value from the gifts. Freaky Friday is an S tier choice here. You can skip over Titan's Resolve and give both of your carries a Trinity Force. Now, positioning in this comp can be tricky. Your main goal is to make sure your melee carries don't get focused down by backline. The most dangerous ones to avoid are Ari, Caitlyn, and Ezreal, basically any single target carry. To do this, keep your melee carries on the opposite side of the enemy backline. Next, you want your Caitlyn behind them on the opposite side of enemy carries as well. This will let her snipe out backliners once the tanks are dead. Echo should stand close to your melee carries to stun anyone who they're fighting, especially if he's holding items like Sunfire or even Shroud. Lastly, you want Kiana standing in front of tanks holding items at all times. This board requires intense scouting to make sure you want your melee units on the right spot. If your carries die early before they can scale their titans, you will lose the round no matter how many 3 stars you have. Did this guide help? Leave a comment and tell me how you do. Until next time, I'm Swagadalic.